<laughs> Overwatch. <laughs> what a franchise. So Overwatch. Overwatch Origins Edition. Overwatch 2. Overwatch Public Test Realm. You know, the hits, they just never stopped arriving. The sequel to the biggest breath of fresh air for multiplayer FPS games is finally coming after years. Overwatch was something very special, and although people will like to claim it was ruined, trash, I still think Overwatch 1 was, even through its rough patches, a fantastic game. It still has something other shooters just don't. So to press the little button there with no way out without looking like a complete fool? It kind of has to be something big, or it'll disappoint. Something that completely spins the game on its head, tickles its armpits, dunks it into a vat of hot milk, covers it in glue, springs a bucket of feathers onto it, you know, you know, a pretty woman style. This needs to come out and wow everyone. Uh this <laughs> is just a mega update with a UI that took a fitness regime. Not really, this seriously just the same game. What? I mean, there's new maps, a mod, and the graphics are uh, existing more, but I mean, this is just kind of, it's, it's, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same! Huh. This whole thing is messy. I can't even accuse them of being money hungry for it because the update is a free upgrade if you already own Overwatch 1. Something I don't know. What can I accuse Blizzard of besides being from hell? What the hell was the plan when deciding to make a sequel this early into the game's life anyway? I, I get needing a better engine for campaign capabilities as that's not really something that can exactly be patched in, but it wasn't something people were clamoring for. I'm willing to say this sequel has done more damage to Overwatch than anything else ever could, and it has always been super, super unneeded. I mean, I think so, but I somehow doubt a billion dollar company cares what I think. Maybe if I was a sexy gamer woman with huge badonkish longs, but yeah. The game also wasn't even dead or dying at this point, despite what Jimmy246 on Twitter might claim. But what Overwatch 2 has shown really isn't different enough to warrant making it a sequel. It just isn't. It's just disappointing that the first game actually did start dying because they stopped providing content or anything, all to focus on two. Hell, they're even saying you'll be able to play the actual Overwatch 1 multiplayer with Overwatch 2 players. So it'll be the same experience game to game, so they'll get the same updates, so it's pointless. And, well, I can't tell you the strides they've made are big because of the shift of 5v5. It does feel different to play. But these are absolutely Absolutely things that could have just been done in an update to the first game, and eventually, apparently, will. Fools! After this showed the gameplay for the first time and confused people with eyes, then came the way and also just moving on to something that still gets fed. That's because Overwatch 1 would be getting nothing but fluff and subtly hero changes. The extra drow would just further increase those expectations. Two and a half years later, I think this is the first public access to the game. First closed beta, not on stinky stupid consoles, but on epic gaming PC. Through the epic f***ing games f***ing cool client, never mind I have to use Battle.net. So, what have those perverts been up to this whole time? In the adventures of Overwatch 2 PvP Bear, I think it's a spin-off, you have access to three modes. Versus, Heroes, Tracer, Roll Queue is martial law here with not quick play, classic, oh, oh, <laughs> wait, the fuck? Oh, oh, they just added it in, okay. Oh. Well, let's just say I spilt some expensive Filipino chili all over my screen, I can't see that option, it's pretty much unclickable. <laughs> oh shit, I have no option but to go and roll queue now. Let's search for a magic. It can't take that long, right? Oh. Well, I uh, guess it can take that long. Alright, I can wait. I have Sonic Forces on Nintendo Switch to keep me company. Getting into the game for the first time and wow. This is crazy. I'm in disbelief. No, really. They've revolutionized, nay, changed the ammo counter. But then the second biggest change here by far must be 5v5. And honestly, this isn't the same game. 
but it is. But it isn't. But the assassination of two players is just a different ball game. Whereas previously you had a second tank to rely on, a second tank to protect and push with, a second tank to abuse to get your ultimate mirror. Uh, that's gone. And with it, a, a plethora of changes are here. Although I can't personally say that I think they're all good. Let's see what the community thinks. Mm hmm. Fair enough, but also not fair enough. Eight marks for this one. In other areas of the game, endorsements are missing. The post game little mirror board is missing. I'm missing! I can't see why they'd remove these permanently, so I'll assume the fire that surrounds a character model when you steal kills or heal the wrong person, you know, all, all of this stuff. It's gonna be there eventually. Also, we have a scoreboard now. No more people arguing about who has the shiniest stickers. <laughs> now we could just tell someone they're bad. You bitches can't even deny it anymore. No, but seriously, guys, bullying is a. Uh, wrong. It's just not right. It was not in the constitution. And it's because of this that I simply have to say. But if you're gonna do it, <laughs> you might as well be right. No one likes the dumbass. <laughs> Also, Overwatch 2 is officially a better Battlefield game than Battlefield 2042. The 5v5 structure takes some serious getting used to. It took me days before the game felt right. Overwatch 2 sucked at first. Five years of playing the first game really stuck to me. I was constantly feeling like teamfights hadn't started, even though every player would be there. There was, and still is, a little feeling of emptiness there. But like I said, after a while you get used to it. When it it just feels more natural. Positive changes seem more obvious. It is one less idiot to deal with, so it just might be the best step forward. Well, I beat Sonic Forces. <sighs> Maybe I should just kidnap nine people. As well as bringing Soldier Boy into the fray, they added four brand new maps and the new Robo Slab game mode. After years of personally harassing Blizzard for our moderators, asking them to just add more slabs to Overwatch, <laughs> They've done it. The face of gaming has been changed. Let me elaborate. In Slab Slam, you fight for dominance over a team designated Slab. It's fucking amazing. As for the maps themselves, I have to say, these are all really great. Both visually and mappy, it's probably the most enjoyable thing about this whole beta. Every map is fun to explore outside of the main lanes, and it's just what the game needed. It's gotten so, so boring sticking to the same old maps that have been in the game since 2016. There's lots of routes and places to flank from while simultaneously feeling fair for everyone on the defending and attacking side. One thing I think everyone could agree about Overwatch ever since it launched in 2016 is that the maps are beautiful to look at. Little details are absolutely everywhere. Things that don't need to be there but charming in their own way have given the game so much personality. I know for sure that I've spent hours forgetting that I need to go smack Al Qaeda around and just look around at the diner in Route 66 or the little bakery in Nambani. All of that strengthens the connection to Overwatch's world by feeling naturally put together. Not like it was designed solely with the intent of being a fight pit. And the new locations really are extensions of the quality stuff you'd expect. It's just nice to see consistency hammer down. So yeah, if there's anything that I truly haven't lost their touch with here, it's map design. The mad dogs in the development team have also completely overhauled outdated, old, stinky Overwatch 1 locations by adding Instagram filters. I refuse to play the old game now. And then there's the hit list of free I would violently harass if I saw them on the street. I'm not gonna go over every change to the roster, cause I'm a guy, not an encyclopedia. But there is a lot of little things they've altered across the board. Both good and... Eh. I think casual players probably won't notice that impact as the overall change isn't so obvious, but I get a completely different feeling from the gameplay as compared to Overwatch 1. For example, uh, my kawaii desu senpai cool epic ninja is the same and hasn't been directly changed. However, because there's less overall obstruction, he can dive without being jolted. You can't force him to be an easy target anymore, along with Doomfist no longer being a hard counter to put him down. This goes for any hero who moves a lot, really. I'm gonna enjoy this while it lasts. No fun is usually allowed for Genji. Some heroes here and there have received huge reworks and it feels weird to play their current forms. Bastard, for example, is completely different. 
The shift away from slower and weighty gameplay meant they had to change main bastion, although I can't say I prefer it. You are far to motorsport now, which changes your gun and lets you move in turret mode. But you do less damage and have less impact. When Bastet went into turret mode, the world stopped. Uh, you knew he could shred you if you didn't focus him, and people played around that power. I have to say, uh, I preferred him that way. This rework would fit better if it was just a new hero. Arissa could take down Ice now, she is crazy strong in two. To compensate for her shield disappearing, Blizzard is letting her summon the spear along Ginus. She can push her horse face onto yours and has also retained her immovable ability. She's just an all around better hero. Doomfist is f***ing weird, I still think they never knew what to really do with the guy. He's not bad, but he just kind of floats in, takes a bullet to the face and floats back out. But it was worth making him a tank, one hits just weren't fun to fight and he is actually still fun to play. Both Doomfist and Orisa honestly feel like they're from different games entirely. Like I said, it's weird. Mei has been punished for making Blizzard look bad in 2019, so they took her damn freeze. But as a bonus, they did make her ice walls weaker. She wasn't even good when she did have all that, this just feels mean. Every support now has self-healing as a passive and that's actually cool. I still think the support role needs more buffs, not only to make the role more appetizing to play, but also so they can survive better, you know, without a second tank. Skrillex is unchanged and still the most fun healer. This one is hard to activate, but Zunya has this new move you can do where he simply plants two long, disgusting, fleshy human legs onto the pavement. I don't think there's a single benefit to this move. I, I, I also don't know how to do it, so Anna still deserves to lose her other eye. Overall, I'm just surprised that very little here feels unfairly overpowered or overtuned. If anything, some of the characters just feel undertuned. For a few years, uh, there was obviously a growing pain over having your gameplay stripped away from you, but I think it's clear they have listened to a majority of those pains. No more lizard squad withdrawal, uh, no more refrigerator, no more head trauma. A lot of this beer seems like a big experiment to what people have been complaining about, uh, rather than a final stage of what they want to do. And I'm still worried, but this beer has legitimately given me faith in Overwatch's PvP. There's at the least a much clearer direction here. Here, even if this isn't worth being called Overwatch 2. And yeah, Soldier Boyan is pretty good too. Fun character, not painful to fight, but her design and silhouette, eh. I'm a bit iffy on it. She's the only character I consistently mix up with other heroes at first. You can usually tell who someone is just by seeing their outline, but I keep mistaking Soyan for Widow or even Soldier, although I do assume I'll eventually get used to it. As much as I do like 5v5, to move into it permanently, there's definitely gonna need to be more reworks to fit the new style of gameplay. 5v5 still feels weird for some characters on certain maps and in general. The game was 6 v 6 for years and years, it was designed like that from the beginning. The problem with reworking more heroes is that it won't go over well with people who play those characters, as that specific type of gameplay is why they enjoy that character. Hell, when they just reworked Mercy in 2017? Christ, you do not want to know how Zimbabwe reacted. Blizzard has said that both games will have the same multiplayer, so these changes are going to be permanent on both games. Games. So why have two separate games for multiplayer in the first place? This is what Overwatch will become, whether or not you like it. I'm just wondering how infuriating it's going to be to play in a year's time. Overwatch 1 was created without a huge, knowledgeable player base with people like me bitching at all corners during its development, and there was one unified vision for how the game will play at launch. This is different. Overwatch is a game that can be easy to break balance wise with so many different factors because of the dozens of heroes and abilities at play. But Overwatch 2 is starting to grow on me and each time I go back and forth between both games, I start to miss how 2 feels more. The lack of CC, the increased focus on engaging with enemies and instead of hiding behind tanks is great. Even if these are things that could have just been an update to the first game. But these 
these old maps were made for six people in mind, and it shows. None of the maps had their layouts changed at all in the past few years. I was actually really disappointed by this, I expected some new flanking routes or changes to the scenery to force people to relearn the maps, but no. You get orange! Take it or leave it! One tank on Eisenball just feels kind of wrong with how it was made if you aren't using a good old shield. And that out of place feeling is simply less present on new maps which were made with 10 people in mind. Also, knowing normal Overwatch is right there when I flick the switch gives me reassurances I can still choose. It's like a safety net, that's the thing. Not everyone will like this shift of gameplay or even accept it if this goes through. Going all in on 5v5 has it's always been a tough decision to be making. It would be nice to have both types of gameplay available, if it were possible. Although that's a fat chance. Some of these tanks were just made with the intention of bouncing off of one another, and work better with the second tank next to them. Without that, the synergy just doesn't feel right at times. And unless other heroes get an Arisa facelift, it'll stay that way. Making regular 6v6 available in arcade and custom games seems a likely choice, but... God. Why there's no classic Overwatch unless you play old versions of the game is completely beyond me. People would love that. All of that aside, I'm personally glad to be really enjoying Overwatch again. This bit is the most refreshing it's felt in years. Although I will admit, part of that is due to actually getting new content. In the end, everyone has different views on what should or shouldn't be balanced. There really isn't an objectively right answer to this. It's impossible to satisfy every Everyone, when we've gone through dozens of versions of this game's meta, someone is gonna be upset when a character gets buffed, nerfed, or loses an ability, even if that ability is the literal bane of seemingly everyone's existence. Hell, uh, people already miss how Overwatch used to play, what it was at one point in its life cycle, so I personally don't think it's healthy for a game to actively change so frequently. I just hope they can prove me wrong and thrive, because Overwatch is a game I've found I can still somehow how enjoy, even six years later after people have stopped having fun with the game, and after my friends have already moved on from it. And then there's the PvE, who knows how that's gonna end up. Me, me, I do. Really though, it's fair to assume it'll be better than the event levels we got, which got boring quick, but beyond that we really haven't seen much of it. It's what I'm most excited for, but they seriously have to prove themselves if these are gonna cost real, authentic, legal. Hmm. Well, at least I have Balbot if all goes wrong, right guys? <laughs>